700. Charging. We've got to focus our background just a little bit more. Thank you, Stephanie. You need anything else before oh. we start? I'm good. Every morning when I open my Instagram, I get this instant rush through my whole body. Every time that I get a like, a follower, a message complimenting me, I get that rush of acceptance. I get that rush of euphoria. And my whole body is ecstatic. I will pretty much spend probably six hours on social media, maybe like four hours doom scrolling and around like five hours a day watching porn. Stephanie has her phone with her all the time. Basically, that's priority, and it's causing her to not be as social, you know, with the real world. She can't stay off of her phone. She can't be present. It's not, it's not healthy. It just seems like she's always has her nose, like, right in the phone, which hurts my heart because I miss her. I'm a registered nurse, but after I graduated, I really had a hard time because we are not allowed to be on our phones. And as soon as I don't have my phone, I instantly get panic attacks. I can't breathe. Like when you're on social media, they don't always know the real you. So you can kind of like be whatever person you want. Lately, she started, um, how do I say this in a non-judgmental way? <laughs> uh, um, she's veered away from, like, her own values. On social media, I feel like people are very supportive of me. And I feel as though it has allowed me to connect with other people in a way that I might not be comfortable with before. And she's had abusive relationships, very abusive relationships. When I'm using social media, it does give me a feeling of confirmation and acceptance, and my heart feels okay just for the moment. I'm really worried for her mental health and her physical health. Like, she can't stop herself from toxic behaviors. It can get real scary. She has had suicidal episodes in the past. She almost died. You know, nobody cares about me. When you get these texts goodbye, it's frightening. When I was around 10 years old, my dad brought a pornographic magazine to me, and he made me do things that I was very uncomfortable with that really were not appropriate for a child. I believed at the time that my mom really didn't care how I was feeling. I felt that she didn't protect me from some of the abuse that was going on and she would just kind of turn a blind eye. And even now, she denies a lot of things that have happened. I did my best to be there for her. So she felt that it wasn't there, that that's her memory of that. And I feel sad that she feels that way. Have a seat, and thank you so much for taking the time to do this, to step forward, to help Stephanie. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, why you're here today and what made you want to help Stephanie. 
Well, I want to see her heal. I think this would be an awesome opportunity for her. I'm just very confused over everything she's been through. To truly heal, we have to hear her, support her, and validate her. Hi. Hi. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Your family has come together because everyone loves you and knows that you are an amazing human being who deserves healing and support. And I think you're in a place right now that's tearing you apart, right? And we're scared for you. And so we'd love to present you today with an opportunity to go to a residential program. The program is 28 days and you will not have access to your cell phone while you're there. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel really, like, scared um, at all, like, completely scared for that. Like, um, I, I don't know, because I use it when I feel, like, weird and vulnerable. This is a great opportunity for you to get the healing that you've needed since you were a child. Michelle, what do you think about something like that? You know, whatever, whatever helps, definitely. Okay, so like, mom, um, you know, like, I totally appreciate you, like, reaching out to me. And I know that I'm, like, still, like, a mess, but um, there were times when, in my life when I feel like you should have protected me when you didn't, and I feel as though, you know, there's so many things that you just turned a blind eye to. I, I don't know what to say. Everybody has their own memories. Please, like, stop not admitting it because it makes me feel, like, frustrated and angry with you because I know the truth. Like, like, I'm asking you to please clarify this and you're just still denying it. Like, is that important for you to move through this healing process to have clarity on, like, what happened and what didn't happen? Is that important for you? Definitely. You know, we have different memories of it. I tried my hardest to protect you. No, you're still lying. I'm not lying. You are lying. Okay, so we'll... You are lying. Stephanie has told me about these traumas for many years, and she's never once changed her story. She just wants you to admit that this happened. Okay, so for me to admit that what happened... Sorry, mean... it's just no, upsetting how, because... How can I say, yes, this happened when I don't know what happened? But she's telling you what happened, so we need okay. you to go based yes. upon I, what your I daughter's telling you. I believe that you've gone through a lot of trauma, okay? I didn't know it at the time. See, that's kind of taking it away, right? When she I says didn't that. know it at the time. But if you tell her, her I, I believe you, but I didn't know it, then it almost is like saying, I hear you, and then never mind, forget it. Like, it makes me feel like abandoned and that I'm not loved and that I'm not worthy. It's so important for victims to be heard and to be validated, especially by those that are their protectors and that mean the most to them in this world. And Stephanie, I think you're filling that void, that emptiness inside of you of not being heard, not being validated, not being loved. You feel fully loved and accepted by the people you meet on social media, right? I think that right now, Stephanie just wants to know that you believe her. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. I know that I remember you telling me about everything going on, and I'm sorry that you went through it. And I do believe you. I just want to help you get through this, and, you know, I have faith in you to do this. It's scary for me to think about going at it, like, alone. <laughs> so... You're not... I love you. I love you, too. Stephanie, will you accept help? Not having your phone, it's hard at first, but I feel like after coming here, I really, honestly, like, I love myself, like, now. Social media made me kind of reach out for, like, that external validation, and now I've learned to have value myself. I feel like everyone should have their phone taken away for, like, a month, you know? <laughs>
85% of us go online daily. Mom, that's enough, stop! But some just can't look away. We want to help change the path that you guys are headed on.